Alrighty, qualification week has arrived for the Clubman Cup here in the Challenge Series, the 640 category championship. And if you're wondering, yes, we have done all the championships in reverse order. Yeah, it's as weird as it seemed in my head, but it's also kind of worked. Because then the final championship will be, like, you know, something else. Uh, might be a Group 3 championship again, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> It would probably be the like a 10-10 split or something. I don't know. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> yeah, qualification week for the Clubman Cup. Same rules as ever. You know, good old uh, five races, top four qualify. And starting grid is determined by your result in the race you qualified in. There's also the rule now that's been like made official that if you do qualify in a race, you cannot make any late any further starts. So if you win race two, you can't show up to races three, four, or five. Sure, you could have shown up to race one and finished like twelfth, and then you could show up to race two. But if you make the top four in any race, uh, do not do not enter subsequent ones because it just makes everything more and more confusing. And these races don't really give out much prize money anyway, because they're a qualify for a championship where there's a big prize money pool. So, uh, yeah, show up for practice if you will, but don't show up to the race, because there's no reason for you to be there if you've already qualified. And the first qualifying round is away. We visit Suzuka Circuit for a mere three-lap event to qualify in, <coughs> to start things off. And, uh, <clears throat> well, the POV part is me. The starting grid decided to play a funny prank and put me in last. As we see Sebastian Sham struggling to keep that glorified Porsche under control. Uh, at the very least, the whole team didn't get screwed as Noir started up on the front row and seems to have taken Jake. A lot of people seem to have taken Jake Scarborough off the line. He's in fifth already. Uh, perhaps he did the same thing that we watched Sham do in terms of running. Through ahead of uh, <clears throat> my teammate, I get dove on by Tao, but. I kind of knew it was coming, so no real, no real complications there. Pepper Mills decides to do a bit of rallying there. I don't know if you saw that a little there. Uh, my 300Z, at least, was very <clears throat> understeery. Uh, couldn't corner all that well. And sometimes like to try and get away from me. It was pretty easy to catch when it tried, but it was still losing time doing so. I was still losing time doing so. At the moment, Katamatsu is in the top four in his minivan. I'm gonna lose my mind if this thing qualifies. <clears throat> like there, ain't, there just is no reason that this thing makes it to the to the big show. And Newstein's gonna go for extra credit down the inside of Kotori, forces Kotori nearly off of the racetrack. I didn't know the Force 2 was stable enough to take that. I figured she'd hit that curb and uh, been on her merry way to the, well, back of the field, but no. <clears throat> New Steen, my throat has decided to disagree with this commentary at the moment. New Steen sort of just uh, muscles her way through in her M3. And, uh, Noir still leads the way. I have caught the train of qualifying cars. Take the minivan on the outside to usurp him from the top four. 
pretty much what I've learned from her battle with uh, Liv, because she doesn't really give me any room either. We're in an alliance here. We don't have to work together, but we don't need to wreck each other. Try. Here I get alongside the the M3 to break a little conservatively, and she forces me on the curb, so I force her on a curb. It wasn't going to hold it against her in retrospect, because at the end of the day, we are trying to qualify for a championship. But also, you know, if you're going to do it, I'm going to give it right back. I'm not about to try and pass Noir if there's 130R, I'd rather us not crash. So I back off just there. So that gives Liv all the excuse she needs to send it. And park the bus on me. And now I was angry because that was a conscious choice. But she cuts me off on exit twice. <clears throat> Noir annoyingly defends from me here, so I didn't dare do that, and the Vortex of Danger just fucks me right over. Man, in a way, Noir was my worst enemy here, because I was trying to be courteous of her and help her, you know, not lose too much time, but every time I did so, I slowed myself down, which gave bitch ass back here, an open invitation to send it down the inside, and... I mean, come on! What do you think I'm gonna do? Remember Noir, I have had to kind of calm her down over team comms over here at this point, because... Well, I basically tell her of the big picture, sort of, you know, blah blah blah, that old shit. Don't wreck your car wrecking hers, because then none of us qualify. Shuts the door on me again, and it's about at this point where I decide to give back what I have received. Wisdom is a circle. What you receive, you must give back, motherfucker. And hey, look at that. I didn't have to spin you out to do it. <clears throat> Jake had uh, almost completed his crusade back to the top four. But I think, remember, I Kotori does some defense on him. This time with a much better exit than her, I choose to take the safe option. You know, when I know I can make the pass before the breaking zone. She decides to give me a bit of a squeeze as a joke. Which is terrifying, but... At the end of the day, <clears throat> for NFR, <clears throat> oh my lord, this couldn't have gone much better. As I will head out of the last turn, and I will win the first qualifying race, Noir will finish right in, right in behind me in P2. It seems me and Liv are probably not done yet, as we're going to both go to the Clubman Cup together, and Kotori is going to hang on to fourth for the last transfer spot. As uh, Scarborough and Katamatsu go home empty-handed, basically. Well, I mean, not necessarily, because they have four more weeks to keep trying. Or four more... Four more days, four more weeks. No. It's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. Uh, I'm going to have my throat, figure out what the hell is going on, and be back with race two. So I stop clearing my throat for the entirety of it.
We are agreeing for the second race of the episode. The next qualifying round will take us to Kyoto Park, uh, the full circuit. Another three-lap event, which takes us through the whole circuit. Yep, that's kind of what's implied. Good job, Raker. <clears throat> and uh, it's going to be a bit of a longer one because of that. That's why it's only three laps. This track's layout is roughly the same length as Spa. And we are on board with Neo Kamiaga, a driver who honestly hasn't really been around all that much. They're still in the series and they make occasional appearances, but ultimately they're one of the less active drivers. But obviously, a bigger event like this is going to bring them out of the woodwork bring a lot of people out of the woodwork. There's a few drivers in this race that haven't really shown up as much as others have. Uh, are Toyota Namatame and Ross Drinkwater up there, for example, or uh, Jesse Green and Molly Rivers, and by taking Lexi Rose up there in fourth. Uh, none of them have really shown up a whole lot as of late. And Lexi probably regrets it because her car just got damaged by something. Katamatsu is here again. And that stupid ass fucking van. Uh, the moment Liza leads the way in her uh, Widowmaker over an Alpha Romeo and then two Mustangs. Although Nozomi is damaged, not sure what caused that. Pretty early on, whatever it was. Oh, I think I put two and two together now. Five twelve. Yep. So Lexi just sent it on her a minute ago. That's what happened. Five twelve. Boom. <laughs> God, the turbo whir on the R thirty two is obscene. It's like, a, like the world's fastest fucking tinnitus back here. Oh my god, that's, that's terrible. That nearly smacked in the throat, but managed to stop in time, and then <clears throat> off goes Nozomi. Fall for damage. Meanwhile, Mizoto is trying to get alongside the Porsche. I don't think you'll find it, though. Kaminaga's gonna try and get Thrasher on the outside. Good old R32 understeer, though, is gonna make that not, ha not happen. <clears throat> make it not happen. Oh, no! This isn't happening! Kaminaga's kinda in line and wait here. She's got a decent lead over everybody else. Neo with the big breakaway out of the S's, and she'll get two for the price of one before we get to the next turn. Risotto tries as he might to send it back on the outside, but he doesn't have the grip for that. Neo he runs out of racetrack in general. Gets ahead of Kaiser, and the R32 will seize the race lead just a little over a lap into the race. Mizoto also sneaks through, and Haneo has managed to catch the group after their battle through the S's. So she's trying to uh, punch her ticket to the top four. Meanwhile, fucking Katamasu just passed Jingwei. He he's another he's once again threatening on the top four. These two battle a whole lot longer. He's gonna be right there with them. Kaminaga is just checking the fuck out. She's already got like a second and a half or two second lead over Mizoto. Is a sending it question mark? Hard to tell, the camera's cut away. Oh yeah, she did. She's alongside the Reno. I could just do this, I'm done. But couldn't hold on the outside on exit. 
the van has arrived. We can't even do chase cam with him because it's just, just a wall. Like, you tell me what you're seeing here. You're just seeing numbers. And he's just overtaking a Porsche in a van. I hate this. And that was like on merit. He just said, I'm taking this position and then passed it. Also, oh my lord, the window tint. That's ridiculous. Makes the sun a lot better, but oh my lord, that's ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, holy shit, this R32 is gone. <laughs> Kaminaga never struck me as a prolific driver, so a performance like this is kinda out of nowhere to me. Thrasher has taken second away from Zoto. It must be weird to battle a person that he once took out. And do it cleanly, no less. Now, Hanio is behind him, too, and, well... Desoto once basically tried killing one of her friends, and yet nowadays, he's one of the more docile people on the grid. And he's one of the fastest, too. I always did say that, and Gina I would often say the same. If he could get this stupid, like, misogynistic bullshit out of his mind, Dude was one of the fastest drivers before, and he's done more than prove that ever since his redemption arc. He's gonna go down the inside of Thrasher, and continue to prove that he is, in fact, a reputable driver as far as pace. Thrasher fights on the outside, but ultimately the Mustang's grip is limited. So the Alfa Romeo wins this battle. But ultimately, this is just setting up the starting grid. As long, these four are pretty clear from the fucking minivan back here. So long as they don't get in each other's way too much, they'll all qualify, and that's kind of the important thing to take away. But at the same time, this is also a motor race, so uh, people aren't just gonna sit around and do nothing, either. Case in point, down the inside goes Koizumi on Thrasher. The Mustang's braking force is betraying Thrasher as he loses yet another position. Now to a Renault. I wonder what this lead is. Like four seconds, maybe? A four second lead built in like a lap and a half. This utter crushing, utterly crushing driving right here. Godzilla returns as Neo Kaminaga will make a, a loud statement with this victory at Kyoto Park. Nika Mizoto is going to drag race Hanyo to the line for P2, and Thrasher will sneak in P4. And those are your four qualifying drivers. Katamatsu with fifth. Just missing the mark after finishing 6th at Suzuka, missing the mark by two places there. Eventually, if he just shows up to all of them by law of averages, he has to get a top 4 once, for better or worse. And the game is not unloading the replay. Alright, well, I'll see you for race 3. This game is very well made and does not have any flaws whatsoever. And race three is green at a very foggy Lago Major circuit. Another three lap race will uh, determine the third set of drivers to qualify. And slowly creeping your way into shot is our POV driver, hometown hero Francesca Fidanzi. We just got a little bit of argy bargy from Mika Harris and Saeed Al Zaman there, but. At 30 miles an hour, that much contact really doesn't look that bad. That, uh, Didn't damage Kogasa's car, so I don't really know if she would care about that either. I mean, yeah, obviously the goal with the Fidanzi family is to never hit anybody, but at the same time, <clears throat> mistakes are made. Or will be made. This, this fucking minivan is here! Oh my god! Nozomi having another try after missing by a few positions before. Kotexa definitely got the whole shot here. 
he's quite a ways away of the other hometown guy, Fernando Fredanzi and his Maserati. And we have a bit of a Mercury battle as Umi uh, lacks the necessary top speed to keep her teammate in at bay. And then Minivan in fifth behind those two. Once again, not far away from a qualifying spot, as I saw somebody slide out there that was probably Nozomi, just getting the tires. Okay, Francesca's finally getting on the move now. She had a bit of a delay on that end, but now she's making progress. We're seeing a lot of the same people show up to each race. It's not like the 640 class is small. There's 69 cars in this category. Nice. <clears throat> so, you know, it's less than a third of the grid showing up every week, every day. But, uh, like, most of the people in this race <clears throat> were also in one of the last two, as Francesca understeers a bit. He still makes the pass. Satoshi Rollins looking to overtake <clears throat> a fellow uh, Expressway Enjoyer. And he will sneak around the outside of the minivan. He will find some grass, but it won't stop him from making that overtake. Nozomi has caught up to Fernando, and they've both started to close the gap to Damien Cotexa. Oh, hi, Francesca, my lord. So, just like that, Satoshi thought he was making a pass for a qualifying spot, but then a sudden Ferrari appeared. And now there's just a battle for fifth. And Umi is defending from life. Basically, I don't know why. That's not a qualifying spot anymore. She's out of the top four. But she is. But in the battle for said qualifying spots, it's getting pretty close here. They've all caught each other, at least four wide. Almost! Damien's going just fast enough. Not really, actually. His top speed is miserable right now. But Fernando backs out and tucks in behind him. That's the only reason we don't go for- oh. Well, that's not good. That's the only reason we don't go four wide here, is that Fernando backs out and tucks in behind Cotexa. We were basically three wide when we got on the brakes. And Fernando and Francesca get together at the apex of the bank turn. Not great from teammates there. Obviously a bit of a lack of communication, but... Uh, Francesca moves into second. Nearly moves into the wall. I might move into the lead here. No, early break. Better exit, though. Still alongside the Mustang. Couldn't get it done there. Just tailgating Tojo on the exit, though. Into the final turn. Francesca basically Conce Driftos her way into the race lead with that. But that Mustang has a lot of power in it. And so it's going to maintain a drag race into turn one. But unsurprisingly, the Ferrari can break later up. Oh. I think Nozomi tried to cross over there, but uh, didn't look in her mirrors enough to do that. Still no damage, though, from anybody involved. Just curious to me. Man, who got this falling hard here? Top four is mostly decided by this point. Unless somebody literally spins off on the racetrack, I think it's basically set. As for the order they will finish in, unknown. But I'm pretty sure our top four in some order will be Francesca, Nozomi, Damien, and Fernando. But Toshi is some like like four seconds behind them right now, if not more.
Oh, more. It's like... Oh, I'm six seconds behind Fernando. And we've only got a sector to go, roughly. I think Francesca has this about under control. We're in our top four, are decently spread out. I don't think we're going to be seeing any more overtakes. And uh, through the final corner, <clears throat> the hometown heroine is going to come through when it matters, and she's going to take a victory at Lago Maggiore. There's only second, Damien third, and Francesca's relative, Fernando, will come in fourth. So two Ferdanzis will make it to the Flubman Cup after this result. And, well, now he has, now he's scored sixth, fifth, and seventh. Karamatsu just keeps picking away at it here. Very slowly picking away at it. Oh, brother. And, uh, yeah, that's that's round three. I mean, it's pretty simple. <laughs> just look at the top four. That's all that matters. And everything else is just like, a, oh, well, you tried. Gold star. And we are green for the... Uh, fourth race. I forgot numbers. What the minivan doing? Oh my lord. Jesus. Four-wheel drive advantages right there. Uh, we are at Deep Forest for finally a four-lap race for the first time this episode. <laughs> All the joking about the status quo in the last episode has really come to a head now since we have only had a single race thus far be a four-lap race. Uh, our camera car is Umi Sonoda and she is in... Uh, well, she's in a pack of sardines right now. Automotive sardines. Three wide into the, uh, tunnel hairpin. Basically not being given any space. Because Thomas apparently needs all the road on the racetrack to get to the, uh, that little 49 or 51 or whatever the hell turned. It would seem that Umi's four-wheel drive advantage wasn't nearly as strong as uh, Katamatsu's, but he's finally been overtaken. Vincent Houston's GT350 has a lot more straight-line performance. But the minivan's not done yet. Bit of argy bargy, but Vincent will still be victorious in that battle for position. Natsuki's in a super beast sandwich, and Umi is in the middle of a bit of a clusterfuck still. It hasn't, nothing's changed, I would say, on lap one for Umi. She spent this whole race just surrounded by mania. And they're three wide behind her as Satoshi Rollins makes a power move to grab three positions on a singular straight. But he's gonna have to grab a lot more than that if he's gonna reach the top four. Who's out of control back here? I think it was Mika. And Umi is going to take full advantage of the oversteering muscle cars and pass them both. Right on the outside. Clears Narashi down the hill. She can now see the four vehicles she must overtake. Well, she has to take at least one of them to qualify all four to win. Obviously, that's how math works. But, uh, she may have Macintosh for company if she doesn't do it quick enough. Her Audi does not have the greatest straight line speed. Substream's helping some, but not a lot. Yep, Mika's back. And Satoshi's there as well. Natsuki is falling like a rock. Meanwhile, her friend Suwako is climbing. 
Not quite as fast as Umi is, but climbing nonetheless. More of a cluster heading up the hill, and Umi is suddenly in P2. What the hell did I miss? Alright, yeah, she got a better exit than the Super B of Jeremiah Wood. That doesn't necessarily surprise me. And then she just runs down the hill with all the momentum in the world and gets both Nakazato and Katamatsu before we even get out of the turn. Wood's going to look for a move on Nakazato, but Nakazato's going to look for a move on the minivan, and he's got the inside. He should get that done. Understeers a bit, but the RX-7 is overhead. It's over. What? A English words come out of my mouth. Battle for the lead. Never mind. It's over. Only just, sw just sweeps on the outside of the Mustang. The GT350, whatever. And it takes the race lead. We're just over two laps in, and Umi has the lead. Karabox is going to have to keep Jeremiah at bay if he wants to qualify. But there's going to be more American muscle catching him at a rate of, well, very quickly. And this minivan, good acceleration. Not great straight line speed. Doesn't really have much aerodynamic efficiency being shaped like it is. And even Jeremiah Wood's Super B is exposing this fact with relative ease. I somehow do not think that, uh... Yeah, Kanemata is not qualifying here either, because now these three cars are all faster than him on a straight. And for bonus points, Satoshi even has better cornering because he has all that arrow. You're done, son. And honestly, besides that, the field's pretty spread out already. I mean, he's got like a two-second lead over Vincent, who has like a, a two-second lead over Nakazato, who has like a second and a half lead over Jeremiah Wood. Meek is already in fifth. And both Tyler and Rollins are tripping over each other, trying to be the first to get a chance at the van. Tyler is... now he's sliding around like he is in the General Lee itself, trying to stay ahead of Rollins, and it's not gonna work. Corvette clears him into the, uh... one of the many long, sweeping turns here at Deep Forest. Is Jeremiah safe from Mika Harris? I think he might be. <clears throat> but it's hard to make immediate judgment calls. Uh, yeah, I think Umi is pretty safe. Also, Jeremiah might take third away from Nakazato here. He's gonna try at the hairpin. He gets his bumper there, Nakazato gives him the break. But he doesn't have he doesn't have it. But what <clears throat> but uh, Umi does have uh, first place here at the forest qualifying her into the cup right alongside Nozomi and Hane already. Uh, Vincent Houston, Noriaki Nakazato, and Jeremiah Wood will join her there. So now Katamatsu's finished fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth in four races. So he'll either finish ninth or he'll finish fourth <laughs> in the next one. A law of you know law of averages pattern or pattern of averages dictates that that's what should happen. Uh. <clears throat> but yeah. So this is uh. It's looking like Mercury is going to be in full force in this championship, as I believe all three of their eligible vehicles have qualified now. Umi's TT, TT Coupe, uh, Haneo's Renault, and Nozomi's Boss Mustang have all qualified. I don't think... Oh no, I'm Kotori. Kotori qualified in the first race. So yeah. <clears throat> One of them has qualified in each of the four races so far. There's no more Mercury drivers left to qualify. So... I guess we'll just head into race five and find out who the last four qualifiers will be. And the final qualifying race is underway. 
and it's Tokyo East that plays host to the final attempt for our drivers to make it into the big show. And if you can't tell from the tires on Setsuko's S14, it is very rainy. Uh, not a whole lot of standing water, but it is still pouring quite heavily, and it's enough to, you know, make it so that slick tires don't work. So... And as if fate has dealt him a final losing hand, Katamatsu starts last. That does make him the POV driver, though. So we can watch him on his final effort to make it in. And see if he has, you know, has anything left. This is his home track, and he runs around this expressway all the time. So I think if there's anywhere he can do the last top four challenge, it's gotta be here. And the rain actually only helps him <clears throat> because it makes four-wheel drive better overall. In relativity to other cars. Uh, he's gonna be like one of the few people not having to worry about throttle application because he's got four-wheel drive on his side. He can just floor it out of turns even with the rain coming down and it won't matter as he gets ahead of fellow Shutoko enjoyer, Satsuko Kuro, who has not had a great start. I would call that putting it lightly. We got a bit of a Mopar battle at the front, as uh, Tyler sizes up a move on Nitori, but finds nothing. There's also just a beetle there, uh, in the middle of this battle between two old Dodge models. Yeah, I think Katamatsu knows what he's doing. He's up into the top five already, and we're only through one lap. And he's about to inherit a top four spot, as Lynette Molsen has rear-end damage to her car. It's not aerodynamic, but the, the natural ride height of this thing will also be helpful if there are puddles. So... It has enough ground clearance to where it wouldn't even have to worry about him if there were any. As Sebastian Sham, I think, just defended from Tyler. I doubt he passed him down the straightaway because it's a frickin' beetle. Let's see if Macintosh has anything in store for that bug. He might, but not right now. Well, he's busy dealing with a minivan at the moment, so he can't do anything with the bug, but uh, Katamatsu has overtaken the pair of them in two corners. And now only Kawashiro remains between the minivan and the race lead. And with a better exit from that high-speed turn, courtesy of four-wheel drive advantage, the minivan of Taka Katamatsu has just taken the lead from Kawashiro. I hate that I had to even say that. Uh, and now he's even driving away, because he obviously knows this track really well. Because he rides it on a daily basis, even not at racing speeds. And because of how much time he's spent here, he's probably spent a good deal of it in the rain, too. So, TXR 3 is in the indication. But the battle for second continues as Sebastian Shem overtakes Nittery for second. Tyler tries to follow him through, and at least for the moment, succeeds. But this challenger is bad fast on a straightaway. <clears throat> and obviously, Nittery is no stranger to water, so we'll see if she has any response. It's kind of looking like a no at the moment. Tyler, why do you have your hand over the shifter? You're in your highest gear. Yeah, the Beetle lacks the torque curve to stay ahead. 
neither of them really have the best torque curve, but Nittery does hit 180 on the straight, so they're all, they all just kind of caught up to each other. They all also caught up to Katamatsu, whose aerodynamic deficiency lacks, makes his top speed lacking too. I think it was roughly the same as Sham's, so that's what I'm saying. So Victory gets ahead of Sham once again. He made his time up in the hairpin and then lost it all on the backstretch. He's relatively safe though, he's got four seconds to play with between him and fifth place. So, Shan Mams be better served, honestly, not even trying to battle the Mopars. If he just stays where he is, he makes it into the club and cup. And that's, you know, that's obviously the primary objective for anybody here. You get a better starting grid if you place higher, but face it, all the prize money comes from making it to the, to the championship in the first place. The money you get from coming last in the Clubman Cup is, even if you did come last, is basically worth losing a couple of grand finishing fourth versus second here. But... Bitch-ass minivan is gonna get the best of both worlds. And by the way, the things have developed here. Utilizing knowledge of the expressways, knowledge of the expressways when they are wet. Utilizing four-wheel drive advantages on a wet racetrack. Taka Karamatsu in a goddamn minivan heads down into the tunnel and will cross the finish line in first to win the fifth qualification round and punch his ticket into the club mid Tyler is going to win the drag race for P2. Sham will remain ahead of Hittery after the hairpin for third. And the Dodge Challenger will make fourth place. And that'll do it for episode 79. So we have our full grid. Uh, a full grid orchestrated. Orchestrated, that's not the word. The grid is set, basically, for this championship which I ordered completely wrong because I didn't remember the order results of this race so a quick preview of the starting grid before we get into things <clears throat> for episode 80 your Clubman Cup starting grid is Riker Lummel, Neo Kaminaga, Francesca Fidanzi, Umi Sonoda, and Taka Karamatsu as the five winners of their respective qualifying rounds. And then we have Victoria Noir, Nico Mizoto, Nozomi Tojo, Vincent Houston, Ty McIntosh, Liv Neustein, Hanio Koizumi, Damien Kotexa, Noriaki Nakazato, Sebastian Sham, Kotori Minami, John Thrasher, Fernando Fidanzi, Jeremiah Wood, and Nitori Kawashiro will start round one in last. <clears throat> Which, of course, makes her the POV car for the start of episode 80. Spoiler alert, but that's how it's always worked anyway, so it shouldn't really come as a surprise to anybody. But that'll do it for 79, and until the big events, goodbye. <laughs>